is the adjournment. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn, and in conjunction with the Business Committee, I have given leave to Mr Alex Easton to raise the matter of funding for road and footpath maintenance in North Down. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes. Call Mr Easton. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, from the outset of this adjournment debate, I have to say that I have been left appalled and deeply concerned at the level of funding for footpath and road maintenance, weed spraying, potholes, resurfacing and general maintenance for the North Down area by Transport NI. I had suspected for some time that the North Down area had been, in my opinion, discriminated against by having the least amount of funding for general maintenance for roads, footpaths, resurfacing transport, uh, by Transport NI. As this has been confirmed in numerous Assembly questions that I have, sub have submitted. For instance, in uh, one of the recent Assembly questions I submitted, the Eastern Division is getting £3.5 million, whereas the Northern, uh, uh, Southern and Western are getting a great deal more. Um, we also see in other questions that um, for grass cutting uh, maintenance uh, right across uh, the Ards and North Down Council area, we are getting the least amount of funding. Also, uh, in another one, we are getting the least amount of money for uh, fixing street lights. In uh, another one, we are getting the least amount of funding for footpath resurfacing and also for weed spraying right across the Ards and North Down area. This is truly an appalling situation for my constituency of North Down that it finds itself in with the least amount of funding out of all the other council areas across Northern Ireland, especially as this is the third highest populated area across Northern Ireland and has a vast rural network area. <clears throat> and start, the real nub of this adjournment debate is to get a satisfactory answer as to why my constituency is getting the least amount of funding. When I challenged you recently about this, you said somebody has to get the least amount of funding. I'm sorry, but that answer is really not good enough. I need to know why we're not getting that, so I hope you understand that. <laughs> My constituents deserve the same amount, an equal amount of funding, as any other area across Northern Ireland. After all, the Minister's party does believe in equality. Well, I want equality for my constituents because as things stand, they are, not being, they are being discriminated against, and I want to know the answers why. I want to know who made the decisions to give my constituency the least amount of funding and what are the reasons for this and what, who agreed to this. Was this Transport NI or was it the Department of Infrastructure? Last year I had to practically beg Transport NI to spray the weeds. I think my colleague would agree with that. I had to beg for the grass to be cut. I had to beg to get potholes fixed and repaired. I had to beg to get street lights fixed. I even had to walk around housing estates on my own because the street light people wouldn't go out and fix them. I had to go out myself and get the street lamp numbers, and I shouldn't have had to do that. I also have been fighting for years to get roads resurfaced, such as Beachfield Drive and Ashfield Drive in Donegal, which from a Northern Ireland Assembly question again, which they can be very useful, um, have not been resurfaced in over 40 years, and this is despite uh, many uh, residents with over 50 letters writing into the previous minister to try and get this resolved. Also, we have William Street in Donaghy. There's not even any records kept of its previous history, except that it was maybe resurfaced before 1973. When I asked you to come and visit these streets to show you the state that they are, they are in, and they are crumbling and in bad state, um, you didn't want to come down to my constituency to see them. So hopefully you'll maybe change your mind. Yep. It's not a case of not wanting to come and see. If I went out and visited every single street in the land, I wouldn't have time to be in this chamber to be doing stuff like we are, other important uh, events and meetings like we do. So it's not a case of not wanting to go, but we have to prioritise a very tight diary. I'm only five months or six months in the position. I have five years. I have no doubt that I will be out with the member on a number of occasions. To that promise. <laughs> Other streets that are needing resurface because they haven't been maintained properly are Church, uh, Churchill Avenue and Shore Road in Malisle, Tower Road in Conleg, Shrewsbury Drive, Chester Park, and Hazelbrook in the Clandybury area. And there's also a need for new footpaths resurfacing for Fairfield Park because it hasn't been maintained, which was on the list to be resurfaced but was pulled due to lack of funding. Wellington Drive, Tower View Crescent, Rockmount Park, and Greenridge Park in Bangor 
all need to have their footpaths done because they've been shortchanged by Transport and I and haven't been maintained. It is becoming clear why we can't get things fixed in North Down, and this discovery through assembly questions shows that, the poor, that we are the poor relations compared to other constituencies across Northern Ireland. This is a damning indictment of Transport NI, and it is no wonder I've been getting so many complaints over the last several years. I've been banging my head off a brick wall and trying to resolve these issues, and I know that uh, many of my colleagues have been uh, banging their heads off a brick wall also on this issue. Minister, what I want to know tonight is who sets these budgets and why North Down and the Arts and North Down Council area are getting the lowest amount of funding, and how long has this been going on? for the lowest amount of funding for roads and footpath maintenance. There needs to be some accountability as why this is happening, and the buck does stop with the Department of Infrastructure. I want fairness and I want equality, and I'm hoping that the Minister will listen to me fairly tonight and hopefully address some of those deep, deep concerns that I have for my constituents. Thank you. All, all other speakers will have approximately 10 minutes. I call Mr Alan Chambers. Mr. Speaker, um, Mr. Speaker I, I thank uh, my colleague uh, uh, Ellie Geeson for um, arranging for this adjournment uh, debate tonight. Um, I know that uh, he's certainly not uh, the only one uh, who gets the, the complaints. I think we, we, we all get our, our fair share of them. And, um, but, you know, I, I do take a point that, uh, that Alec has, has made over recent weeks about North Down having the, the, the least amount of the, of the cake, as it were, of the budget. Um, but I'm not sure, I'd be interested to see how the Minister maybe uh, uh, responds to that, you know, before uh, I would join in any sort of finger pointing about it. Because it, it strikes me as maybe it's a sort of a relative thing, because the, um, when I talk to colleagues from all over the province, they're all identifying the same sorts of problems. There doesn't seem to be anywhere that's uh, Shangri-La as uh, regards to the grass been cut and the, the potholes been fixed. Everybody is complaining. You only have to go on to Twitter and look at the, the photographs. There's competitions about who can find the deepest pothole in Northern Ireland. So it's an endemic problem. It's not just uh, unique uh, to North Town, but naturally enough, the, the minister will appreciate that we as representatives from North Down are, are, going, to, are going to bat our constituents' uh, corner on this. Um, I would say that, uh, too, I think before you, you know, uh, I say any more, um, I think I would like to acknowledge uh, to the Minister uh, it's not all gloom and doom. Uh, there's a lot of good work is done uh, by the, the, the local uh, transport NI uh, in and around Bangor. Um, certainly the, the investment, huge capital investment in the Grand Shore Road roundabout, I think is money that has been really well spent, contributed uh, to road safety. I know there are, there are issues, and I've identified them, and, and Alec has, uh, has talked about them as well, um, about issues of, of the timing of the traffic lights and stuff at Grand Shore Road. But when I see young kids going to school, old people on Zimmers, uh, young mothers with a, a, a toddler in a pram and a toddler by the hand crossing that road in safety. Uh, I, I sort of think it's money that has been really well spent. Um, around Bangor, there's a lot of the older parts of Bangor that have been built maybe 40 or 50 years ago and don't seem to have had any investment in them. Um, and that is in relation to footpaths in and around the Tarview area, Ashford area. And I'm not so sure, maybe again the Minister can enlighten me uh, about this, so maybe I can have a better understanding of why the, the issues are there and why we're here tonight uh, having this debate. Is, you know, in, in, I refer to the, the olden days, uh, we had guys who went round at night and who identified uh, lights that were out and took the appropriate action and they were categorised and they were fixed in a, in a certain time frame. And as Alec has said, it does seem to, the, the responsibility now does seem to fall on us as elected members to actually to get individual light numbers uh, and report it. And as well as that, I'm not sure, uh, again the Minister will confirm, I'm not sure that the footpaths are walked in the way that they used to be by inspectors who would have identified uh, defects and, and marked them with the, with the, the paint spray uh, for repair and so forth. But, I mean, some of the footpaths in and around that area I've referred to, Tarview, 
just are, they're just not fit for purpose. And yet when I asked the, the, the local uh, office to, to do something about it, they, they come up with all sorts of excuses. But um, in terms of grass cutting, uh, I have to say, put it in record, the grass has been cut a few weeks ago. That's probably the best cut that I've seen for a couple of years. It's been unfortunate coming into winter that uh, you know we're not really people are not going to get the benefit of it when we were in high season and we were uh, we were looking for the tourists to come down. The place did look like a jungle. In fact, uh, I, I tweeted a, a joke about we maybe the department would consider maybe appointing a couple of big game hunters to patrol the uh, Bangor Ring Road. The grass was so long, and God knows what was uh, God knows what was run about in it, you know. But um, it, the, in terms of that. Um, I have a bit of a, a sort of a bee in my bonnet about the noxious weeds that, that, that grow. Uh, and I mean, Transport and I are probably the biggest uh, landowner in Northern Ireland. Uh, if you add all the cumulative uh, bits of strips of land that they own. And yet, uh, when I asked a question about uh, statutory notices getting served on landowners for allowing noxious weeds to uh, prosper on their land, I was told that in the last five years, 30 statutory notices were issued to landowners. But only two warnings uh, were applied to Transport NI, who, as I say, are probably the biggest landowner in Northern Ireland. And, and it, just, uh, it, it does concern me a little bit that it's one government department maybe not prepared uh, to face down another uh, government department. But the, I mean, there is, it is a genuine concern that those noxious weeds are growing on Transport NI land, and they should be, uh, they should be attended to. Um, I mean, the, the program for government as well talks about improving Northern Ireland as a destination in terms of tourism. But if we're going to allow uh, the infrastructure to deteriorate, particularly in places like uh, uh, Bangor and, and, and coastal areas, um, we're not going to fulfil that uh, aspiration of our program for, for government. And then 2015-16, we're told that there was a non-availability of a contractor. Now, if I'm reading that right, and the minister again will confirm, for a whole year, that whole financial year, there was, there was not a contractor appointed to either do resurfacing or patchwork or clean gullies. Um, and that's rather disturbing that for a whole year, North Down got nothing done, never mind whether there was enough money there or not. The money wasn't spent and there was nothing done. And I would also point out that, again, I don't know whether councils are responsible for this, but somebody should be taking a robust approach to this. Curbsides. The amount of debris that's lying there, and that's, that's the nursery for weeds for next year. Uh, nobody seems to you know, take a shovel and, and go along the curbsides and clean up, and I think that that's something that, uh, that needs to be done. But I say, again, the minister will confirm whose responsibility uh, that, uh, that is. But um, the other thing I'd like to put on record, it's, it's, it's really nothing to do with maybe tonight's debate, but I'd be remiss if I don't put it on the record, is a street called The Point, and my colleagues will be well familiar with it in Groomsport, um, which hasn't been adopted, and it's built on the coast, so it's a rocky road. It wouldn't even take a horse and cart. The bin lorry struggle to go down it. The postmen don't want to go down it. Nobody wants to go down a private car, but there's about 10 houses, and those people have endured that. Those houses have been up for about 70 years, and nobody is prepared to grasp the, uh, the nettle. So I just want to put it on the record that, that you know, somebody somewhere in this day and age, does need to take responsibility and, and, and get that uh, sorted out. I know that the residents there would be prepared to join in some sort of a joint venture uh, to, to, to get that road surfaced and get it adopted. Um, thank you, Minister, for your attendance tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Call Mr. Gordon Dunn. Mr. Speaker, and I too welcome the opportunity. I'm sure the Minister is glad to hear North Down on the agenda again. But we do appreciate him coming along, and we're looking forward to him coming down to maybe spend some time in North Down looking at the, the, road, the issues of the roads and the, the A2 and so on. It's only down the road, you know, it's not far, and you, you will be welcome. Um, roads maintenance in North Down continues, it continues to be, and as my colleagues have already said, one of the biggest issues of concern uh, of our residents. Roads and footpath resurface and weed spray and hedges needing cut and street lighting repairs have been are not being maintained to the required standards by Transport NI within North Down. And I genuinely mean it. It's probably the biggest issue. Roads, planning and housing is generally the priorities we have in our office. and has been for years. People, the people in North Down pay their rates and 
they pay their contribution and they expect to have decent standards. Right? When, they, when they go home at night, they cut their gardens and they cut them and they strim them and they look over the fence and they see the weeds and the growth and the grass and it really does frustrate people who make a contribution to society. There are many housing developments within North Down, many which have been built for over 40 years, particularly in Hollywood, Bangor and Donaghadee, and they still have the old broken footpaths throughout. We need to see considerable investment in resurfacing of our footpaths and roadways within these residential areas. Again, major issue when you go to the doors, this is what the number one issue is. Those footpaths, they're a real risk to everyone, including the elderly, as they can be a trip hazard, as they can often become overgrown, and on, with unsightly weeds, some of which are not spread in a timely manner. And we do appreciate this year, Minister, you got that going. I know it was late, but even in October, people appreciated the work that was done, and the weeds now are generally under control throughout the area. I have looked at the Southern Division Spring Report to Council for the Irish and North Down Borough Council, dated July 2016, and there is evidence that North Down has been very, done very poorly against the Ard section of the area. Whether this is a carryover or not from the fact that we have recently moved into the Southern Division, and I noticed from the map we are right at the very edge of the Southern Division, but there is clear evidence that we have done very badly in, within that report. One example of this is in relation to asphalt resurfacing of roads and, and footpaths. There were 20 done in Arge, there were seven done in North Down. In terms of bitmark resurfacing during the same period, there were seven in Arge, one in North Down. In terms of surface dressing, there were 14 schemes within Arge area compared to one in North Down. There were four footway reconstruction schemes completed again within the same period, all within the Ards area. In terms of drainage maintenance schemes, there were 14 within the Ards area and three in North Down. Now that, I think it highlights the points that have been made by my colleague Alec Easton. I understand that following many discussions we have had, and we do have regular meetings with a section engineer, we have just confirmed that with Alec, and we do appreciate their contribution and coming to meet us on a regular basis. But we now understand there were contractual issues, and again raised by my colleague Alan, um, that there were contractual issues relating to the roads contracts and that no contract in relation to a lot of this work was done in North Down. The frustrating thing is, Minister, we weren't advised of that. Not during the last year, tw 14 months, were we told that the contract was not was in dispute, and I understand there was a legal challenge on that contract, and as a result, the work we were told the work was not carried out. We were told there were money issues. Surely the Minister recognises the need for investment within North Down area to address the shortfall in terms of maintenance work actually carried out on the ground. There are again real issues in the maintenance along the A2 dual carriageway. Dare I mention it again this week, but I know some of these points were raised during that debate. Resurfacing hasn't been carried out previously, a section of it would have been done every year, causing some traffic disruption. We all are aware of that to this high volume road. These sections were done on an annual basis. Nothing has been done in the last couple of years within the area. Grass cutting on the A2 is another issue of concern. It comes up every year. These issues come up every year. The target is again five cuts per year, yet larger sections have just recently been, been cut got their second cut within October. And this one area in Hollywood still only has been cut once. And again, I would argue, Minister, we need to see a separate maintenance contract similar to that of the A1 for the A2 carriageway, where there is such a high volume of traffic. And that motor, it's because you have such a high volume of traffic, the road is, is again, is very dangerous, and we need, we need proper maintenance. Weight control is another issue which needs to be prioritised. We did get a spray, and as mentioned earlier, carried out in October, in October, but frustrated residents rightly believe they should have been carried out much earlier in the year. Yeah. Finally, I would say street light and repair, as has been mentioned, continue to be a real challenge. I understand we now have a new contractor in place who has just taken responsibility, and they are working their way through a backlog to get the lights cleared. Uh, count, or, not Councillor Chambers, <laughs> Alan Chambers, MLA, has made the point that there are no inspections now carried out in relation to street lighting. I would like to hear the Minister's assessment of that 
Are there any plans to reinstate inspections? And the other issue is online reporting. How effective do you see the online reporting system? And I do really think that you need to do something to increase awareness, public awareness. We need to have some uh, increase in public awareness through some PR, through maybe perhaps television advertising in relation to on the online system, because I believe the man and the woman in the street are not really aware of it. And it's something I think we need to, to invest some money in. We need to see investment within our roads network and much improved maintenance programmes in North Down. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oh, Mr. Stephen Agnew. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the proposer for bringing this motion forward. I'm sure when he, he did so, he didn't realise we were going to be here to, to this time, so uh, I'll not blame him for that. I'll blame those ministers making the various statements this morning. I'd also like to thank the, the minister for being here so late for what is the uh, second German debate of recent times in North Down. I, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that he's perhaps done more than, than, than any individual in Irish history to eradicate the border between North and South Down. <laughs> and, uh, so I do appreciate him taking the time and to, to, to heal some of those old wounds that, that we may have had in the past. I, I, I have sympathy with the, 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 the Minister on, on this issue. Of course, I share with my colleagues um, many of the frustrations um, that they might have had in, in terms of contact and uh, particularly transport NI on these issues. There is no doubt uh, going round the doors. It is the thing that comes up time and time again around whether it's, whether it's weeds, whether it's cracked pavements, whether it's potholes and roads, um, and a frustration from constituents who have maybe reported these things many times to many different MLAs, um, and we all get frustrated at the, the, the lack of the department's apparent ability to, to resolve the issues. But I, I, I have sympathy because I watched his predecessor, Danny Kennedy, um, make the point that there were going to be consequences if, if, if more resources weren't given to his department and he was told to, to, to live within his means and so he sought to introduce revenue raising measures and he was told he wasn't going to be doing that um, and I think we do have to be realistic and we have to be honest to our constituents we, 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 we have choices to make and we can choose to, to, to raise revenue which means somebody Paying more somewhere, and I, 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 I referenced the recent debate that we re reduce parking fines. You know, and, and again, time and again, we hear proposals for where we re can reduce revenue. Well, reduce revenue does mean reduce services in most cases, um, barring finding efficiencies. But I think, to be fair, uh, a lot of work has been done in that regard in departments and finding efficiencies. I think sometimes we do need to find more revenue. So I, I think that it's important to put that on, on, on record, that if we want more, um, to some extent, we have to pay more. And that's why I welcomed today some of the revenue-raising proposals of the Finance Minister in terms of, of rates, some of which um, I, I've been calling for for some time, including the, the lifting of the cap on rates, which will have a disproportionate effect of residents in North Down. But I think it is right. Um, that those who have more, who can afford to pay more, should pay more. Um, and as I've said repeatedly, that our constituents in Kilcooley um, shouldn't continue to fund the rates of our constituents in Coltra. Might not be a popular thing in, in Coltra, but um, I, I think it's a fair point, point of view. Um, so, uh, as, as I say, these are the issues that, 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 that come up time and time again, perhaps one suggestion that, that, that shouldn't have a huge revenue impact minister is, is about communication. Um, one of the things I, I, I get time and time again is, is our street hasn't been done in 30 years, yet the street around the corner was, was, was only done last week. Um, it doesn't help in terms of street lighting. My own street um, has got brand new LED lights, and they're lovely, um, and I'm very grateful for them, um, but my neighbouring streets don't. And they'll, I'm sure, look and go, oh, why the MLA gets new lights. So uh, it's, it's, it's one that, 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 that certainly uh, feels a bit close to home 
in that regard. And, and I, my suggestion is, Minister, is just in terms of communication, even if it's through MLAs, for us to communicate wider what are the plans. And maybe I don't know, do enough to find these things out, but in terms of rolling out the LED street lighting, in terms of rolling out um, new tarmac pavement to replace old cracked um, uh, paving stones, um, you know, I think that communication can maybe help with some of that frustration. Because I think if people feel they're on the list and their time is coming, then, then, then maybe they won't be putting so much pressure on us and us in turn so much pressure on Transport NI. Um, if we can communicate those things, um, it, it's those who feel that, that their turn is never coming that will we'll kind of shout the loudest. So I put that out as a suggestion. I make the point about revenue raising. Um, again, I thank members for the contribution, and I look forward to hearing the Minister's response. Call the Minister for Infrastructure, Mr Chris Hazard, to respond. Minister. Thanks very much, and I thank the member for, for bringing it forward, and certainly for, for the four who have stayed to, to discuss this. So, just quickly to start with, with, with a few points before I get into the, to the, to the meat and bones, as I say, but I think it would be proper to put on record right from the start, and perhaps the, the proposer was not alluding to this, but given the impression that responses to the AQWs recently, uh, in your words, confirmed that there is a practice of discrimination uh, against North Down, absolutely I would refute that. Certainly in the six months that I have been in position, um, I probably should go on record to say it was your own party colleague who was the minister before I came in, so many of the things that you allude to actually are from that time. So I think it is right that we only dismiss that idea. The notion of equality, to me, this is a notion of equity, uh, and I think the statistics bear that out. Um, you know, if, if we take, for example, you know, Ards and North Down represent, I was just doing the figures there, 15 per cent of the entire roads in the Southern Division, yet they receive 20 per cent of structural funding. Now, in my own particular area of Newry Morning Down, we have 40 per cent of the roads, but only receive 35 per cent of the funding. Uh, myself and Katrina Ryan could come to this chamber and perhaps more legitimately claim uh, that there is some sort of discrimination ongoing, but certainly that is simply not the case. When it comes to Ards and North Down, if we separate, North Down represents 5 per cent of the overall divisional roads, where the Ards is 10 per cent. That is why, Mr Dunn, in your figures, there is that one-third, two-third split whenever it comes to an awful lot of their projects, because that is the way it is going to balance out. So it is not a case of discrimination, it is a case of equity, uh, and I think that it is borne out. Again, I think this is reflected through Mr Agnew's comments and Mr Chambers' comments. I think there's a, a majority of MLAs have been out taking down streetlight numbers, have been out looking at grass. We've all been doing it for years. There is no doubt that this department does not have the, the adequate resources that it needs to deliver the sort of services that we want to see. I don't think there's anybody inside this House who would argue that we have enough money to get on with the job. There's simply not enough resources to do the sort of things we want to do. And Mr Agnew is 100 per cent right. You know, we're going to have to look at where we get the money. Uh, can we get more money? Uh, and I have said since coming in uh, that I think we need to be looking uh, at different revenue raising options, but these have to make sense. These have to be fair. Uh, and they can't punish the, the public purse uh, in the long run, so I, I'm willing to do that. Um, and again, I go back to the point that, you know, around the roads and housing are the big issues in North Down. It's the same in South Down. It's the same right across the area. You know, these are big. I was in uh, Carntohar and Slot Neil in South Derry last week, and there were potholes big enough to dip sheep in. There is absolutely no doubt that this is an issue right across the board, and we simply don't have enough money. So I want to dispel that notion in the way of discrimination. I think, and certainly over the next five years, from me, you'll certainly see none of that. Uh, you know, the independently established structural maintenance funding plan, uh, which members will be aware of, recommends an investment of some £140 million pounds per year. Uh, which is some 85 per cent of which is capital in order to maintain the structural integrity of our road network. Currently, the funding levels available to my department for road capital and resource maintenance is 81 million, an amount significantly short of that requirement. In distributing the resources available for road maintenance, allocations are made by my department to the four transport and I divisions on the basis of need, using a range of weighted indicators tailored to each maintenance activity, such as resurfacing, patching, gully empty and grass cutting. Divisions also use a range of indicators when apportioning across council areas to ensure as far as possible an equitable dis distribution of funding. 
Ards and North Down Borough Council area is allocated funding for structural and routine maintenance on the same basis as other district councils, using indicators such as road mileage, structural condition and population. To put this into perspective, Ards and North Down has a total public road length of around 1,100 kilometres, out of a divisional total of nearly 8,000 kilometres. However, I should explain that yearly allocations vary to reflect funding pressures within section areas and are also influenced by specific allocations for high-priority work such as trunk road resurfacing schemes and coastal defence repairs. On that basis, it can be assumed that no section will receive a fixed percentage of the available allocation each year. In general, transport and I maintenance section offices maintain a priority list of resurfacing schemes for their area which have been determined from a range of indicators such as surface condition, defect numbers and vo traffic volumes. The section office uses this information as well as visual inspections to decide the best use of the available resources within their area. The priority lists reflect current road maintenance needs within the area and therefore some degree of flexibility is necessary to address any changes on the structural integrity of the roads network. The current capital structural maintenance budget for Southern Division is £20 million, which includes additional in-year funding resulting from the outcome of the June and October monitoring. This funding is being used to deliver significant road improvements in 2016-17 in the Division, including the North Down constituency. I should point out, as members have alluded to in here, that in 1516 limited capital works in the form of resurfacing were carried out in North Down due to contractual difficulties in the award of a new contract, including a legal challenge to the Department. This meant that the award of the resurfacing contract was delayed and therefore only schemes ordered before the expiry of the previous contract were delivered. These included schemes at the A2 Banger Road, Abbey Street and Ballingskull Hollywood. Court proceedings were prolonged such that Transport and I was unable to award the new contract until August this year. I am pleased to inform the members that these matters have now been resolved and that Transport and I has in recent months undertaken three major resurfacing schemes uh, the Ballymascaw Road Hollywood, the Bally Robert Road Coversburn, and the Rathkeel Road Roundabout at a total cost of £636,000. In addition, a combined footway reconstruction and carriageway resurfacing scheme is being carried out at the Morrison Park area of Bangor at a cost of £150,000. I will continue to bid in monitoring rounds to enhance structural maintenance funding during this year to invest further in the road network. Following the June monitoring, which delivered additional funding for capital structural maintenance activities, I announced the Rural Roads Initiative in the Assembly on the 20th of June. The aim of this £10 million initiative was essentially a road improvement package to stop the deterioration and repair severe defects on the local rural road network. I can advise the members that the Ards and North Down Council area was allocated half a million pounds of this funding. With regards to resource funding for the delivery of routine maintenance functions such as patching, grass cutting, weed treatment and gully cleaning, the members will be aware of the difficulties faced by Transport and I over the last two years. A limited service was in operation due to financial constraints, with the budget available being provided to the Department's internal workforce and to external contractors where our internal workforce did not have the capacity. Despite the financial constraints, roads have and still are being expected as normal. However, patching repairs have had to be prioritised as far as resources permit. In 2015, due to the Department not being in a position to provide a schedule of work as a result of the financial constraints, the external contractor who provides services such as weed treatment and gully cleaning had to lay off much of his workforce. This created difficulties with the delivery of weed control and gully cleaning services. I am pleased to advise members that funding is now in place and the external contractor has recently completed a programme of chemical weed treatment and has now commenced scheduled gully cleaning. With regard to grass cutting, I can confirm that two cuts have now been completed along with sight lines as required for road safety reasons. In summary, I would again return by thanking the member generating this discussion and giving me the opportunity to highlight the difficulties facing my department in delivering a road maintenance service in general and in particular to his constituency of North Down. I would like to reiterate that my department will continue to undertake comprehensive inspection and maintenance activities in line with the available funding for all the benefit of road users in North Down. And in addition, I will continue to bid for additional funding for road and footway maintenance activities to improve the infrastructure. Just, just one final point: it was raised about the online services. I agree entirely. The, the 
and I direct online service for reporting of streetlights and potholes, I, I think is very successful. Um, I think we need to be sending the message out to, to get it reported. Um, it may take a number of weeks to get round, but we, it will go on a work programme and we will get there. But again, as Mr Agnew has pointed out, I think we need a bit of realism into this. We need to understand that the guys that are out doing this, the teams are very small now because of the VES process, because of a lack of resources. So we'll get them on the works programme. We will get to it. Um, it may not be tomorrow or the day after, but we will get to it. Thank you very much. Members, yes.